This is the Hewlett Packard HP 65, the first fully programmable pocket size calculator. There are three ways to use the HP 65, and Hewlett Packard has prepared this series of videotapes to help you learn each method of use for this amazing calculator. Stop the tape whenever you like to think for a moment, or to make a calculation on the 65, or to review a section you'd like to see again. Also, we've included several sample problems for you to do, so please stop the tape when you see this sign and complete the problem. These videotapes are for you. Use them in a way that best satisfies your instructional needs. The only additional materials you need are the owner's handbook, the quick reference guide, and an HP 65. The 65 welcomes your experimentation. Try what makes the most sense to you. Most likely you'll be right. Pushing buttons will never hurt the HP 65. The worst thing that can happen from a mispunched key or a programming error is the 65 will blink its lights at you. The blinking can be stopped by pressing any key. The manual recommends the clear X key. The calculator is now ready to use again. All the data is still intact except for what was directly involved in the blinking. And usually even that can be recovered. The best teacher is your HP 65 itself. Try what makes sense to you. If you make a mistake, clear X, recover your place, and continue. Let's begin with simple arithmetic. After turning the machine on, check that the right program run switch is in run position. This will be the position for the switch until we learn to program the HP 65. Let's see how to enter data. Numbers are entered from the keyboard by keying in the digits and decimal point in left to right order. Clear X replaces anything in the display with zero. Negative numbers are entered by keying in the digits and then pressing change sign. As soon as a number is keyed in, it can be operated upon by any of the built-in functions. Most of these are activated by pressing prefix keys before another key. For a function written in gold above a key, press the gold F key, then that key. For the inverse of a function written in gold above a key, press the gold F inverse key, then that key. For a function written in blue on the inclined front face of a key, Press the blue G key, then that key. If no operation is appropriate after a number is keyed in, press enter up. Now key in the next number. Any of these arithmetic operations can now be performed. In this case, we want times. Hewlett Packard calculators do arithmetic just as you do it. To add 53 and 89, you'd write down 53, and underneath that, write down 89. And then you'd add. It's done exactly the same way on an HP pocket calculator. Key in 53, press Enter Up. Key in 89, and then press Add. Do the same thing for division. 105. Enter up, 15, now divide. The quotient is 7. The simple old-fashioned math notation explains how to use an HP pocket calculator. The numbers first, and then the operations. A simple rule with no exceptions. Try this calculation yourself. Computing with an HP calculator is easy because of the operational stack. The stack consists of four data locations called the X, Y, Z, and T registers. Data is shifted and positioned automatically among these locations. The display shows the contents of the X register, but we can imagine the other registers in the stack hovering above the display like this. 
When a number is keyed into an HP calculator, it is placed in the X register. Pressing enter up moves this number up to the Y register, leaving a copy of it in X. Keying a new number into the X register leaves the value in Y unchanged. We can combine these two values arithmetically and read the result in the X register. Or press enter once again and move the data up. Now we can key in a third number. Pressing enter moves all the data up one place and leaves the X register unchanged. We can key in more data. Repeating the process once more pushes our first entry over the top and it is lost. This stack of data can be manipulated at any time. We can exchange the values in the X and Y registers by pressing the prefix G and then X exchange Y. We can roll the whole stack down by pressing G, roll down. Or we can roll it up, G, roll up. We can rearrange these numbers any way we please. Pressing clear X clears only the X register. To clear everything in the stack, press either gold key and then clear stack. Later you'll discover many uses for the registers and motions of the operational stack. But for now, remember that arithmetic operations take place between the X and Y registers, and answers are placed in the X register. Likewise for the other functions in the calculator. The X's and Y's on the keyboard refer to the X and Y registers. For example, the Y to the X key. This key takes the number in the Y register and raises it to the power of the number in the X register. The answer is placed in the X register. The other important thing to remember is the enter up key moves data up the stack and leaves a copy in the X register. It gives us an easy way to compute squares. Key in a number, enter up, times. Internal accuracy of the HP 65 is always to 10 significant figures in scientific notation. Scientific notation for a number means writing it as a number between 1 and 10 multiplied by a power of 10. These two digits on the right are the power of 10. A hundred million is kept internally as one times ten to the eighth. And a thousandth is kept as one times ten to the minus three. The HP 65 can handle magnitudes far more extreme than these. It can work with numbers above ten to the ninety-ninth. Down to infinitesimals as small as ten to the minus ninety-ninth. We can choose between scientific and fixed point notation for the display. However, in the registers, numbers always have 10 places. With either format, we can display from 0 to 9 places to the right of the decimal. And rounding off is automatic. For fixed point notation with 4 places to the right of the decimal, press display, decimal point, 4. For scientific notation with five places, press display, then five. Press decimal point for fixed point notation. Omit it for scientific notation. Entering numbers of very large or very small magnitude requires scientific notation. Key in the significant digits, then press enter exponent, and key in the power of 10. For negative exponents, the same procedure, but after we press enter exponent, we press change sign. For negative numbers, you must change the sign before you press enter exponent. Numbers can be keyed in this way, no matter what format is specified for the display. Arithmetic is still done the same way. Since we've pushed our numbers up the stack, to multiply the last two entries, just press times. Here's one for you. 
Multiply these numbers together. Here's the answer. Now compute this quantity. We've seen how to enter data and how to manipulate the operational stack manually. The stack also performs many movements automatically. It's these automatic motions that give the stack its tremendous computing efficiency. Let's perform a simple chained calculation and observe what happens in the stack. Here's a column of figures to be added. Key in 52. Press enter up. Key in 39. Add. Now key in 43. It's not necessary to press enter. The operational stack moves up automatically after a calculation. Add. Key in 26. And add. Our answer. After any calculation or any data control operation, the stack is prepared to lift. Keying in the next number lifts the stack automatically. When we do anything that shows the HP65 a number is complete, the stack lift is enabled. Sometimes calculations can be done without ever pressing the enter key. Here's one. Try it. Along with the automatic lift of the operational stack is an automatic drop. Here's another way to do our addition problem. We can enter all the data into the stack. Now add. The stack has dropped down. We can add two more times. And get our answer. Another capability of the stack can be seen in this example. When the stack drops down, the T register retains its value. There are many clever ways to make use of this feature. At the end of section two in the owner's handbook, you'll find an interesting one. The most powerful aspect of the operational stack is its ability to retain and position intermediate results. Look how the stack handles this problem. We add 35 and 80. 115 is an intermediate result. The stack will hold it for us as we continue. Add 45 and 65. The stack always positions our numbers for the next operation. In this case, times. This is the great advantage the stack has over all other data handling methods. We don't have to read out and re-enter data. Retention and positioning of intermediate results is automatic. See how easy it is yourself on this example. Here's a series of keystrokes that solve the problem. The more complex the problem, the more you'll appreciate the capabilities of the operational stack. Here's another time and effort saver, the last X register. Before any calculation is executed by the calculator, the value in the X register is stored in a separate data register, the last X register. Here's how we could have used the key in this previous problem. 3.65 square root G last X recalls the previous value to the X register and the lift is automatic. 
So we can add and take the square root. Recovering from errors is another use for last x. Suppose we want to subtract these two numbers. But we multiplied instead. Pressing g last x recovers the previous x. And dividing returns us to our former number. Now we can press g last x one more time. And this time press the correct key subtract. Use last x to compute this expression. The last x register and operational stack give you several ways to avoid re-entering data. Let's take yet another look at this problem. Since we're going to use 3.65 twice, let's push it up to the Y register. Take the square root, then add it to the number in the Y register, and square root again. With a sound understanding of the operational stack, calculating is a pleasure. If we don't want to take the time to be clever, or if the data is too complex for our ingenuity, the HP 65 has nine addressable storage registers labeled one through nine. Let's store these metric conversion constants. Millimeters per inch. Store one. The constant is now in storage register one and a copy of it remains in the X register. Next, grams per ounce. Store, two, and the constant is stored in register two, and so on. In the course of a calculation, whenever we need to convert inches to millimeters, just press recall, one, and the HP 65 puts a copy of the constant in register one into the X register. Because of the automatic lift, everything else in the stack gets moved up and the conversion to millimeters is completed by merely pressing times. Besides storing and recalling data, we can also do arithmetic between the X register and the storage registers. This is the only time when answers are not placed in the X register. With register arithmetic, answers are placed in the storage register. Here's how it works. To subtract what's in the X register from what's in register 2, press store minus 2. The answer is in register 2. Let's recall it to the display. Likewise, we can multiply what's in the X register times the contents of register 1. Store times 1. The most common use of this feature probably is accumulating and averaging. Use register addition to sum these numbers in register 1. Then divide 5 into the accumulated sum using register division. Recalling register 1 gives the answer. Registers 1 through 9 can be cleared all at once by pressing either gold key and then clear registers. Most of what you've seen here applies to Hewlett Packard's other pocket calculators, the HP 35, HP 80, and in particular, the HP 45. To fully appreciate the computing power packed into these calculators and the HP 65, you must operate them yourself. Then you'll know why Hewlett Packard calculators are the world's finest.
Learning to use the HP 65. This second video program takes a closer look at the built-in functions. Use this videotape in the way that best suits your learning pace. Stop, start, rewind when you choose to, and please remember to do the problems. By this time, you've discovered most of the functions built into the HP 65. And know that to activate them, you press a prefix key, F, F inverse, or G. If you press a prefix key by mistake, including store or recall, you can clear it by pressing clear prefix. First, let's look at functions involving angles. The HP 65 can operate in any one of three angular modes, degrees, radians, or grads. You choose the angular mode by pressing the G key, and then one of the angle mode keys. These are not angle conversion functions, but indicate to the HP 65 which units to work in. For example, to find the sine of pi over 4 in radians, we press G, then radians. Now compute the angle. That's pi over 4. F sine gives the answer. On the other hand, if we prefer grads, units common in Europe, set the mode, then for sine of 50 grads, key in the angle. Press F, sine for the answer. When you switch on the HP 65, the angular mode is automatically set to degrees. The mode stays set until you change it. The inverse trigonometric functions are performed by pressing the F inverse key. Depending on the angular mode setting, your answer is in degrees, radians, or grads. Let's return to degree mode and compute the arc sine of 0.707. 45 degrees. Angle conversions between the three modes of angle measurement are made with this key. Whatever the angle mode, by pressing F and this key, the HP 65 converts the decimal angle in that mode to degrees, minutes, and seconds. The format for displaying degrees, minutes, and seconds is this. The five digits before the decimal are whole degrees. The first two after the decimal are minutes, and the last two digits are seconds. So the display should be set to display point four. Let's convert 20.875 decimal degrees to degrees, minutes, seconds. Set the mode. Key in the angle. Press F, then press two degrees, minutes, seconds. The display reads 20 degrees, 52 minutes, 30 seconds. The inverse of this function converts from degrees, minutes, seconds, back to decimal degrees. Let's convert this degree measurement to its radian equivalent. First, we go to degrees, minutes, seconds. Then change the angle mode to radians. Then convert from degrees, minutes, seconds, to the angle in radians. Use this procedure to find how many grads there are in one radian. And how many degrees are there in one radian. One radian is 57 degrees 17 minutes and 45 seconds. Or this many grads. Or this many decimal degrees. With the HP 65, we can add and subtract degrees, minutes, and seconds. Or hours, minutes, and seconds. Quite convenient for computing elapsed time. 
Or in surveying, suppose we have a line C, whose azimuth angle is 36 degrees, 14 minutes, and 21 seconds. And a line D, with a deflection angle from C of 29 degrees, 52 minutes, and 17 seconds. Add these two angles to find the azimuth angle of the line D. After keying the angles in, press F, degrees, minutes, seconds, add. The azimuth angle of the line D is 66 degrees, 6 minutes, 38 seconds. There are two more conversion functions. In the rectangular coordinate system, a point is labeled according to its distance to the Y, and X axes. In the polar coordinate system, a point is labeled according to its distance to the origin and an angle. The HP-65 converts between these coordinate systems with the rectangular to polar key. Put the Y coordinate in the Y register and the X coordinate in the X register. Press F rectangular to polar, and read the distance coordinate in the X register, and read the angle coordinate in the Y register. For conversion the other way, use the F inverse key. Once again, the angle mode can be set to whatever units you find convenient. The other conversion function is decimal to octal. Computers and computer programmers like to work with base 8 numbers rather than the conventional base 10 numbers. To convert 65 to its base 8 representation, press F, then press to octal. 101 in base 8. Most of the gold functions on the keyboard and their inverses are easy to recognize and you're probably using them already. The remaining gold function is the integer function. Pressing F and then integer truncates a positive or negative number. Using F inverse and this key gives the fractional part of a number. The only gold operations left to mention are these. They're for setting and testing flags and are used only in writing and running programs. Now, let's look at the blue G functions on the front surface of the keys, the ones that are not program control functions you've probably discovered yourself. The uppermost blue functions are the relational operators. They are used only in programming. Next are the angle mode keys and G delete, a program editing function. Then we have stack manipulation. In the next row are the reciprocal of X, Y to the X, and absolute value functions. The real usefulness of this last function comes in programming. Then we have no op, a programming function, the constant pi, and n factorial, a function useful in probability and combinatorial calculations. Finally, in the bottom row we find last x and the decrement skip on zero key, another programming function. The built-in functions of the HP-65 give you tremendous computing power. Try some problems and see. We'll leave you with this one. The net resistance of this circuit is given by the harmonic average or equivalently compute R by each formula. In the first case use the reciprocal key. In the second stack manipulation.
Learning to use the HP 65. This third videotape shows us how to program the HP 65. Use it in whatever way best suits your learning pace. Stop, start, rewind when you choose to. The HP 65 is very easy to program. The programming language is just what you see on the keyboard. The keys themselves are the program instructions. Inside the HP 65 is a program memory that stores 100 steps of keystroke instructions to be executed later automatically. This memory space is in addition to the nine storage registers and last X register. The stack and every faculty the HP 65 has in manual operation is available in programming. Here's a formula that converts degrees centigrade to degrees Fahrenheit. Let's program the HP 65 to make this conversion for us. First, we'll do the problem manually to see what keystrokes are required. Key in a centigrade temperature, enter up, nine, times. Now, five, divide. Finally, 32, add. We get 68 degrees Fahrenheit. This is the sequence of keystrokes we would use for any centigrade temperature. And this is what we'll program into the HP 65. Now we'll pick a user definable key from the top row to control execution. Let's use C. So then we add label C to the top of the keystroke list and return at the bottom. We now have a program for the HP 65. To place the program into memory, just slide the Write Program Run switch to Write Program position. Press F Program to clear program memory and punch in our list of keystrokes. That's it. We have written and entered a program into the HP 65. Switching back to run mode, we can try it out. Key in 20 degrees centigrade, press C, and get 68 degrees Fahrenheit. For any centigrade temperature, pressing C converts it to Fahrenheit. One keystroke replacing many. With the calculator in run mode, here's what happens when we press C. The HP 65 searches through program memory until it finds a program labeled C. Then it executes, in sequence, the instructions after it. In this case, it pushes what's in the X register up to Y, then puts 9 into the X register, multiplies, and so forth. Until it reaches an instruction that stops it, in this case, return. With the program we have here, the answer we want is in the X register. The storage registers, the stack, everything operates just as it would if you pressed the keys yourself. Let's take a closer look at how we enter a program into memory. We switch to write program mode. Unless there's something in program memory you want to save, always clear the memory before entering a new program. Pressing F program clears memory and positions the machine at the top of memory. Zero, 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 zero is the marker for the top of memory. We have room for 100 instructions under it. Let's re-enter our temperature conversion program. Pressing label, we see two, three in the display. This indicates the second row, third key, the position of label on the keyboard. Next, we press C and see one, three, the position of C on the keyboard. Enter up is fourth row, first key. Now press nine. The numbered keys use their own number for their memory code. Times, seventh row, first key. Five, and so on through the entire list. The keystrokes are entered in memory as program instructions, and they are coded by row and column according to their position on the keyboard. 
Each keystroke we've seen takes one step of memory. For the sign of a number, we must press F, then sign. To do this in a program requires two steps, one for F, one for sign. However, to conserve memory space, the most commonly used functions requiring prefixes have been given merged codes. X exchange Y is one of these. The 35 for the prefix G is combined with the 07 for X exchange Y into one step of program memory. Storing and recalling in registers 1 through 8 are merged also. Recall from register 5. Another merged code is no op. This instruction is for no operation and represents a blank step in memory. Pressing F program fills the memory with no ops. Check the owner's handbook for more details on merged codes. Here's a formula for the area of a circle in terms of the radius. Program your HP 65 so that when you key in a radius and press A, your machine will give you the area. If your machine is programmed correctly, then for radius 8, pressing A should give you area 201.06. Switching to write program shows the instruction where the HP 65 is presently positioned in program memory. Return was the last instruction the HP 65 executed. Let's look at all the instructions the HP 65 executed when we pressed A. To position the HP 65 at the top of memory, switch to run mode and press return. This key has a different function in run mode than in write program mode. In run mode, pressing return positions the HP 65 at the top of memory. In write program mode, once again, we can step our way down through a program one step at a time by pressing single step. There's label, A, enter up, times, G, pi times and return. This program computes areas of circles. After that, no ops. Let's change this program so that it works on the E key instead. Using return in run mode takes us to the top of memory. Back in write program mode. First, we'll delete A. We use single step to position the machine on A. Then we press G. Delete. A is removed, and no hole is left. All the instructions below A move up one place. Now we want to insert E after label. The position is correct, so we press E. E is inserted after label, and all the instructions move down one place. Now, E executes the program. To review, let's put A back into the program. Return to the top of memory. To insert a step, we position the HP 65 at the preceding instruction. Then we key in what we want inserted. To delete a step, we position the HP 65 to show the instruction we want removed. Then press G, delete. Since we have lots of room left in memory, let's also put in a program that computes the volume of a sphere from the radius. Correct your area program if necessary, and underneath that, program your HP 65 so that the E key gives volumes of spheres. This program computes volumes of spheres. But let's do it another way. The formula for the volume has, as a part of it, the formula for the area. So let's write the program for the E key with this in mind. 
Under label E, we'll write enter up to put an extra copy of the radius in the stack that we'll use later. Just as we can call A from the keyboard, we can call A from a program. When the HP 65 encounters this instruction, it will go to the program labeled A, execute it, and return. Then it continues executing the program under E. Take a moment to think about what happens in the stack during all of this. You see that extra copy of the radius riding up and down the stack on top of the calculation in A. Now it sits above the number that was computed in A. So we can multiply and get pi r cubed. All that remains is to multiply by 4, divide by 3, and to put return at the end. The program is complete. After it's keyed into memory, here's how it works. Radius 1, E, volume 4.19. The program E called on the program A and used it in the calculation. Program A is nested inside program E. Only one level of nesting is allowed. Program E can call on other programs, since that still is one level of nesting. But program A cannot, since that would be two levels of nesting, putting a program inside a program inside a program. We've got one key for area, one key for volume, and lots of room left in memory. So let's write some programs that will compute areas and volumes from diameters instead of radii. To find the area of a circle with diameter 10, it's a simple matter to divide by 2 and then press A. But let's have the calculator do that. Under label B, we'll write enter up, then 2, then divide. Now we want to go to A. We could call A and return to B as we've done before. But since we have the answer as soon as A is done, let's use go to instead. When the HP 65 reaches this instruction, it jumps to label A and executes the instructions under A. When it reaches the return statement in A, the HP 65 stops. A go to instruction must, of course, be followed by the name of a location that is labeled somewhere in program memory. Keys A through E and digits 0 through 9 can be used to label locations in programs. During execution, the HP 65 passes over labels without stopping or computing. Labels provide names for locations the HP-65 can jump to. Under label B, we have a program that computes areas from diameters. Let's do the same thing for volumes. Under label D, we can put the same program, but we'll go to E instead. Calling E in this program without the go to wouldn't work, since that would create two levels of nesting. Later, try leaving out the go to yourself and see what happens. Pressing D will take what's in the X register, treat it as the diameter of a sphere, and compute the volume of the sphere. Before we place these programs into memory, let's review what we have in there already. At the top of memory, under label A, we have the program that computes areas of circles. Then, under label E, we have the program that computes volumes of spheres. We'll be at this point in the memory after we compute a volume using E. Switching to write program mode, we find ourselves here. We key in the programs labeled B and D. When this is done, program memory looks like this. We have quite a few steps in program memory now, but editing still can be done conveniently. The HP 65 has many features that make modifying a program 
a simple task. Just as return has a positioning function in run mode, so does go to. In run mode, pressing go to and then a letter or a digit key positions the HP 65 at the corresponding label in the program memory. If we press go to and a letter or a digit key that is not a labeled location in the memory, the HP 65 moves to the top of memory. For debugging programs, it's quite helpful to monitor the execution of a program step by step. This we can do by using single step in run mode. Let's take a diameter of 10 and watch program B work step by step. First, we must position the HP 65 at program B in memory. Go to B. Now we're at B. Pressing single step executes the enter up command. Single step again puts 2 into X. Once again, divide. Again, go to. Again, A. The HP 65 now moves to A. Continuing to single step now executes the program under A. Put these programs into your HP 65 and experiment with them yourself. You could even make some improvements. Be sure to try out single step in run mode on each of your programs. Also, why don't you write a program for the surface area of a sphere and put it under C. Here's the formula. This program will do surface areas. To make a record of the program memory, just put the HP 65 in write program mode and run a magnetic card through the machine. This does not affect the contents of memory. All 100 steps of program memory are both on the card and in the machine. Whenever we want to use these programs again, on this or another machine, just run the card through again, this time with the mode switch in run position. To protect against accidentally recording another program on this card, we clip off the notched corner. The HP 65 will not write on a magnetic card whose corner has been cut off. We have covered the basic elements of programming and program editing on the HP 65. But there are even more advanced programming features on this remarkable machine. We'll give you a brief introduction to them here, but for a complete discussion, read section 4 of the owner's handbook. Program stopping and starting can be controlled by using run stop. In a program, when this instruction is encountered, execution stops. From the keyboard, pressing this key starts execution of the program in memory from wherever the machine is positioned. Generally, this instruction should be used for program interruption and restart. For example, to enter or read out long lists of data. There are several different types of conditional operations on the HP 65. Arithmetic comparisons and flags. They all operate in the same fashion. A test is made and a decision results. True or false. When a conditional is encountered in a program, it is tested. If the condition is true, the HP 65 continues executing on the next step in memory. If the condition is false, the next two steps of memory are skipped and execution resumes on the third step. The arithmetic conditionals compare the contents of the X register to the contents of the Y register and depending on whether the condition is true or false, the HP 65 continues on or skips two steps in memory. There are two flags in the HP 65. These are the keys that control flag one. 
a flag can be set or unset. Press F, set flag 1, to set flag 1. Press F inverse, SF1, to unset flag 1. In programming, we can test whether a flag is set or unset. F, test flag 1 in a program, test to see if flag 1 is set. Yes, continue. No, skip 2. Or, if we prefer to reverse the outcomes, use F inverse, test flag 1, to see if flag 1 is unset. Yes, continue. No, skip 2. In any case, if the condition is true, execution continues on the next step. If the condition is false, the HP 65 skips two steps before resuming execution. The remaining instruction is DSZ, decrement and skip on zero. This instruction is used with register 8 for looping and counting. When DSZ is encountered during execution, 1 is subtracted from register 8. Then, if the contents of register 8 are not 0, the next instruction is executed. If the contents of register 8 are 0, the next two steps of memory are skipped before execution resumes. In the example we have here, 5 is stored in register 8. Let's count how many times the routine under label 1 is executed. Because of the operation of the DSZ instruction, the HP 65 passed through the loop five times. To count with DSZ, enter a loop with register 8 set to 0. Each time we pass through DSZ, register 8 is decremented by 1. When we leave the loop, the negative of the number in register 8 is the number of times we went around the loop. We'll show you how to use the flags, conditionals, and the DSZ key in programs in a later videotape, along with some advanced programming tips. The keys on the HP 65 give you the opportunity to include in your programs branching, decision making, looping iterating, calling. Practically all the things you do on large computers, you can do on the HP 65. And yet it's so easy to operate. Programming is an art. You'll find it's never been easier or more creative than with the HP 65.